So today we're gonna roll up our film like a poster. We're gonna flip the liner to the other side of the film and then we're gonna unroll the entire thing like magic onto the windshield with a super clean, flat insulation. This is by far the most magical way to install a windshield. So first up, I'm gonna go to the inside and I'm gonna look to see what kind of obstructions and what kind of windshield I'm even working with. Um, this has the old school Ford mirror, even though it's a 22. Uh, if it's a pretty simple windshield, I'll first pop up anything that might come off. And then this is that old style clip that if you know how to take those off, definitely do that. Then I'm going to clean the outside of the windshield, glass aid it, dryer sheet it, let that dry. Then we're going to put the film on top of the windshield um, and just smooth it out, get it ready for shrinking. I did include the entire shrinking portion uh, in this video. I just put it at the end because I want to get right into the reverse rolling portion. So once we shrink it, we cut it to size um, and then peel the glass aid line. And then I'll go through, polish up all my edges with a heat gun, make sure everything's going to lay flat because if it lays flat on the outside, it should lay flat on the inside. So now we're ready for the beginning stage of reverse rolling. The inside of the windshield is clean, but what's nice about this is that it's a very straightforward method for installing film, and it's a lot more procedural. So I'm taking a big flat squeegee. This is a Libman squeegee. I first squeegee half of the windshield, and then I'm gonna peel the liner um, about a quarter of the way, and then I'm gonna pull up the other side. This way, the liner doesn't flop all over itself, and it makes it very straightforward and you know if we want to say origami or it's just a very direct way to kind of pick up all the film so it's not flopping all over the place and then introducing a bunch of dirt then i'm gonna spray the film and i'm gonna get it to lay back down about as smooth as i can possibly do that you don't need to make sure all the air bubbles are out but you do want to make sure that it is at least all laid on top of the film that you just peeled so once we go uh, do one side, then I'll go over to the other side, squeegee the other half of the window. Again, pick up the liner, start to spray my film, pick up the entire rest of it. So every area of the film has been picked up and sprayed. And then this side, I was a little bit more clumsy, but it kind of illustrates that it doesn't need to be completely perfect. But the perf more perfect you get it, the better your install generally going to be. So once we get all that film... Uh, basically the liner is now floating on top of the film. So I'm gonna grab the corner and I'm gonna roll the entire thing up like a poster. I like to start on the passenger side of the car. Uh, basically first side to be rolled up is the last side out. Um, so if I'm gonna start with the driver's side, I wanna roll up the passenger side first because uh, the driver's side would be the first bit to get unrolled. You wanna keep about as tight of a roll as you can. And then once I get to about halfway, I'm gonna continue roll up the entire film and get that roll as tight as I can, but don't sweat it if it's a little bit bulky. Now this is where the magic happens. So the liner actually sticks to the opposite side of the film after it's rolled up, you just separate the two and then you start to unroll it. And that's honestly it. Like you do this a few times to really understand what's going on, but the liner is now flipped over to the back side of the tent just from the act of peeling it, rolling it up, and then sticking it to the other side of the film. And then as I separate it, it now just unrolls to the other side of the film. So I sit on the passenger side of the car, reach over to the driver's side. I used to do this opposite. I used to sit on the driver's side um, and unroll it actually on that side, but you'll see later on the film will kind of bunch up. Uh, if you're not careful. So it's actually easier for me to do it this way. I got a hot tip from somebody um, and this has worked out really well for me. So the goal here is to try and line up as much film uh, exactly where you need to early on. That'll help everything uh, in this reverse roll process. So I'm only unrolling a little bit of film at a time. I'm constantly checking all my edges. I'm just kind of shifting it around, trying to get my film lined up uh, as close as possible to where I need to go. And then I'm gonna pull the liner when I get about halfway there, cause then it'll start basically guiding the film as I'm unrolling. So I'm gonna flip to the inside of the car and show you exactly what happens from a different perspective. So I carry, I unroll some film, I carry it in, so I probably got like an entire foot of film rolled out here and I'm holding it with one hand and you can see like the film up towards the liner. You want to get this as far down as you possibly can before you get too far with your unrolling because you could tape 
that that upwards area you just want to make sure it, it gets lined up because it, again it makes it as clean of an installation as you can possibly get it so once we get it tucked down into that lower corner then i start unrolling it with my other hand i'm always supporting it and the act of it being rolled up like a tube just helps support it through most of the unrolling process so this was kind of a hard thing to uh, film while I was actually installing it. So over on the passenger side is where I go through the rest of the way that I pull the liner out a little bit early. Um, so this is just a repeat of what we did. Um, this was a windshield I did in 50% ceramic this morning. Um, so we pulled the liner uh, and then it helps basically unroll when we get most of that film supported onto the glass and things are kind of in place. The more room that you have to work with on the inside of the windshield is then going to make this a lot easier to do. So when you're doing something like an Audi, you're going to have a lot harder of a time. So at that point, I let the film drop. I pull the rest of the liner early, and then I basically let the entire thing hang, and then I can tuck up my film, uh, kind of like bowed up there, and then I get the entire thing uh, to lay flat against the windshield. And being that it's 50%, it's very easy to kind of miss a corner or something, like leave a little light gap. So you're gonna go over the entire windshield a few times, making sure everything's exactly where you need it to be uh, before you go and squeegee it out. And then as you're squeegeeing it, you're gonna start in the center and kind of work your way out like a giant ripple. And you're always checking your edges to make sure the film didn't shift because it is all loose against the glass. Um, and the more you tack it against the glass, the more it's gonna stick. So you want it to lock in place in a spot that is, you know, dead center, ready to go. So once you get it in place, that's the hardest part. Then it's a matter of just squeegeeing all the bubbles out, like I said, in kind of like a ripple pattern where you start in the center, work your way out. And uh, on this Ford mirror, I kind of wanted to point out a little tool. I'll leave a link in the description because it's basically like modified channel locks. Um, I believe Equalizer sells this tool, but when you're putting these mirrors back in, this tool is perfect for supporting underneath the mirror tab and it basically vice grips back on without risking damage to the mirror. So I didn't want to forget the shrinking portion in this video. I know that's always an important thing to kind of show, but being that we did a 50% ceramic, it's, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to kind of show some of the nuances and the Explorer windshield is not exactly a super difficult windshield to shrink. So if you have one of these things, um, you should definitely be happy, especially for the installation portion. I've had quite a few Explorers lately and they're just all around a much more straightforward windshield than the Audi A4 windshield that I did immediately after this one. So Wagner heat gun, 45 degree angle, um, just watch your heat. You're waiting for all the, the film, basically where it bunches up, you're waiting for these softer looking air pockets to kind of form sideways. Um, it's better illustrated when we do the uh, downward section of this windshield, but didn't want to leave that out for anybody that wanted to see this. And I'm definitely going to be making quite a few more of these videos. They've been doing pretty well. So thank you guys so much for watching them and supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate you too. So these are those like softer air pockets that I'm kind of talking about. You see how it basically ripples up. It's going to happen a lot faster. Uh, for like the first quarter of the windshield. Um, and definitely make sure your sides are kind of tacked down. Never shrink out the sides. Always shrink up to where the sides are. You can sweep some of the, the fingers and stuff out on the sides. But you always want to make sure you never shrink or, or card down past where you shrunk. So if I only shrink that first quarter, I'm only going to card down to that first little bit. So down towards the bottom is where you can start to see some of these reflections be a little bit more pronounced. Um, we're definitely going to use a little bit more heat towards the bottom. Just give it some heat, knock it down, give it some heat, knock it down. But I'm always watching for those air pockets to form sideways because that is basically telling me that they're ready to be pressed down. Um, I'm only going to go halfway on the windshield. It just keeps things a little bit more straightforward, I guess. And then for the sake of this one and illustration, I decided to go completely <laughs> all the way to the bottom. Uh, as soon as you're past that white line, um, that's all you need to shrink. Jumping over to the other side, same thing. The top of the windshield is going to go way easier. Out towards the side edges is always what's going to give you more of a, a hard time. And you can see that little like tension line there. That's basically, that's why I stop halfway on the windshield. 
um, if because the windshield bows, it's it's lower on the sides than it is in the center. It, it's kind of like a small bridge, right? So towards the middle is actually less shrinking than on the sides and down towards the bottom corners. That's where you have the most curve in a windshield. So that tension line that meets halfway in the middle, um, I need to shrink the rest of the windshield to kind of bring that line down to meet in the middle. So you can see that area now, I, I'll attack that whole section that's basically telling me there's a whole bunch of film there that needs to be shrunk. Um, but not as much as the bottom corners, but still, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself uh, on one side and then work myself into like a bit of a pinch spot. So again, I think we start shrinking a little bit farther below the line for the sake of illustration. And then you can see that corner in the bottom left is has a lot more film than what there is in the middle. The middle is essentially flat on this windshield. And then most of my film is bunched up uh, in the top corners. So here, um, yeah, I just end up pull shrinking it here. Just show you, all you need to do, lift the film, heat it up. See those tension lines? They start to look a little pronounced, a little tight. If those lines are too over shrunk, then you're going to have a hard time getting that film to lay down. But this was basically shrunk just enough, probably borderlining too much shrink. Um, but you know, with a little bit of pressure, you get it to lay down. It's not a big deal. But again, this comes with time. This comes with practice. Don't be frustrated when you're practicing shrinking. Know that you can do this on the same window um, dozens of times. And, you know, it just, it, it'll come with practice. And then after I cut it, I also make sure all my edges are all touched up. So that's also part of shrinking too. So I, I do like a rough shrink make sure everything is all set and then cut it and then polish up all my edges. But there you go. Thanks.